and on this video I'm gonna be reviewing the Wolfbox GA50 mirror dash cam. But wait a minute, you already seen that I have already reviewed the GA50 mirror dash cam. What is going on Alex? What are you trying to pull? Well, I am gonna review the GA50 Wolfbox mirror dash cam. Well, there's two of them, which is the real GA50. <laughs> And I originally thought I wasn't gonna release this video, but I thought it'd be fun to share with you guys. Sometimes what happens when we review products, and this happens in the industry all the time, people get a product sent in for review, we look at it, and somewhere in the middle of the process, the manufacturer says, oh, you know what? We actually ended up swapping this part. Hold on, let me send that over to you. Or in this case, this entire dash cam got replaced with this dash cam. Or was it this one with this one? I don't remember. But I'm gonna show you a GA50 that you have never seen before. Now what makes this GA50 different than the one I showed you earlier? Well, there's quite a bit of stuff that happens in the hardware side from you. You'll see when I show you the video, but it has one feature that I have not seen in any, any other mirror dash cam that I have reviewed. And I really like the feature. So I wish at some point Wolfbox will bring it into their GA50 or into another model, or perhaps another manufacturer can add that feature because I think a lot of people can benefit from it. But with that being said, I'll now present you with a GA50 review for what I call the GA50 V2. Wolfbox has just released their brand new Wolfbox GA50 mirror dash cam. And this dash cam has one very interesting feature that I have never seen before in other mirror dash cams, and I can't wait to try it out and show it to you guys. My fellow car enthusiasts, welcome back! I am Alex and I review cool car gadgets and other accessories for your vehicle. So if those are the kind of videos that you like, consider subscribing by hitting the button down below to see more videos like this. But with that said, let's take a look at the Wolfbox GA50 mirror dash cam. And here's the Wolfbox GA50 mirror dash cam. And this dash cam happens to be of the 12 inch category and it is reflective like all mirror dash cams. So we can run this with the screen off and this is gonna work and look like a standard car mirror or we can use this as a digital mirror with the screen on and towards the bottom of the dash cam we have a power button and a microphone and towards the top of the dash cam we have several inputs we have the input for the rear camera we have the input for the GPS module and we have a memory card slot. Now they already include a 32 gigabyte memory to get us started with, but this can be potentially upgraded all the way up to 128 gigabytes of memory. Then we have the power input in the form of a USB-C type port. And on the back of the GA50, we have the main camera. And Wolfbox says that they're using Sony sensors and this camera happens to be able to record at 4K. Also, you'll notice that we can aim the camera but we can also rotate the camera a few degrees. Now this is not a very common feature that I see. Being able to rotate the camera a few degrees allows us to compensate for any kind of tilt to make sure that the image is nice and straight. But now let's look at the rest of the accessories of the Wolfbox GA50. And first off, we have the rear camera. And let's get this guy out of the package. Now the rear camera can be installed inside of the vehicle. They have included double-sided tape. So I can peel that tape and I can stick this typically to the back of the rear windshield or it could be placed outside because the camera is waterproof if we wanted to put it outside typically by the license plate. Now they have also included additional hardware. What this does is bracket can mount on here and that can allow us to add tilt to the camera if for some reason we wanted to adjust the view angle. But they have also included a vertical bracket for mounting the rear camera. Now this potentially can happen when mounting the rear camera on a truck or any other kind of vehicle that has a flat rear windshield and what this bracket does it allows us to mount the camera against a flat surface like this this is something that is not normally included with dash cams mirror dash cams typically I only see the tilt bracket I don't always see the vertical bracket next up is the extension cable for the rear camera that connects it to the mirror dash cam and this extension cable is quite long it's about 20 feet in length which should be sufficient for most vehicles next up is the GPS antenna and what this does it enables the dash cam to record our coordinates, speed, and direction. And the GPS antenna has double sided tape in the back, so I can peel this and stick this to the car so it's not moving around. Next, we have the power adapter, and that adapter is in the form of the cigarette lighter adapter plug. And then we get two sets of mounting straps. Let me show you how these things work. And here's the GA50 mirror dash cam, and here is the mirror on my vehicle. And I'm gonna place that GA50 right on top of the mirror, and then I can secure it with the silicone 
nylon straps, one on each one of the ends. Now they have included two sizes to be able to accommodate either larger mirrors or smaller mirrors that might need a little bit more grip. And finally, we get a microfiber cleaning cloth and the instruction manual. Now the instruction manual is in full color and shows us the features, the contents of the dash cam, how it's mounted to the vehicle. But now that I show you the contents of this box, let's move over to the vehicle so I can show you the rest of the features. And this is the Wolfbox GA50 meter dash cam. Now normally this is going to turn on automatically every time we turn on the vehicle, but I like to do this manually so we can see how fast it takes to boot up. And as you can see, we are presented with the rear of the vehicle and on the upper right hand corner we have the date and time and on the bottom right hand corner we have the information for what has been enabled on the dash cam including a recording indicator showing us that we are recording. Then on the bottom left hand corner we have a compass and then we have a miles per hour indicator. Now this is the rear view and we can adjust it by sliding on the screen <laughs> and as you can see there's a tremendous amount of view here we can set this whatever we want to feel comfortable at and then leave it there however we can also see the front view and the front view is also adjustable and if we wanted to see both cameras at the same time we have a split view showing the front and the rear but perhaps this is the coolest feature of this mirror dash cam notice how wide the view is towards the rear most people prefer that and that's the advantage of a mirror dash cam that provides a wider view than a standard glass mirror which provides a narrow view however if we slide our finger on this side we can simulate a narrow view it's just like if we had a standard glass mirror now this is convenient for somebody who wants to have that narrow view as opposed to a wider view most people are going to use this in the wide view but if you wanted to have a narrow view you can do that with this mirror well let's also talk about adjusting the brightness and that is done with this upper slider we can bring the brightness down or bring the brightness up and then we have several icons in the bottom the very first one is this lock icon if i tap that lock icon notice how the blinking dot now turned to yellow we told the dash cam something special just happened flag that video so i can find that later then we also have a camera icon and if i press that camera icon we take a picture. The center button allows us to change the views, which is the same as I showed you earlier, the equivalent of sliding your finger on the screen. And then this button right here stops the recording. If for some reason you wanted to have no evidence of where you've been, you can do that and then you can resume recording again one more time. Now to view the videos, we can take the memory card out to our computer or we can hit the playback menu. Now in the playback menu, you notice that we're automatically playing the video and it has been sorted out into front view and rear view, allowing us to find the file that we're interested on quite quickly. But let's also test out the parking assist. Notice what happens when I put the car on reverse. The view automatically goes lower about 15 degrees and we get reversing guidelines to help us guide and not hit the curb. Now what's interesting is that the guidelines are adjustable. You can move on the screen like this either to the left or to the right and that's going to adjust them until you find a spot where they line up with the curve. And when you are done with the parking function, notice what happens when I put the car into D. The camera returns to its prior view which I think is very convenient. Now in order for you to enable the parking assist functionality there is one additional wire that has to be hooked up to the tail lights of the car and i have made a video showing how that process looks i'll put a link to that video in the description down below if you want to check it out the next option that we have is going to be the settings and that is this little gear icon and on the settings we can change the resolution now the rear camera is always recording in high definition 1080p this is primarily only going to affect the front camera we can have it at 4k or we can lower that to 2.5K if we wanted to fit more in our dash cam, or if we really wanted to bring that down to HD, we can do that as well. But let's also talk about the G sensor. This dash cam has the ability to sense when your car got hit or got involved into a car crash, and that is done with the sensor. And we can set the sensitivity of that sensor to high, medium, or low. High may create a lot of false alerts where the dash cam thinks you are crashing left to right, especially if you live in an area with a lot of potholes. So I leave mine on low. But let's also look 
look at the screen off function. We can have the screen on all the time, which is how I have mine. However, we can have the screen turn off after a few minutes and this will revert back to a normal mirror while still recording. But here's a cool feature of this dash cam and that is the screen saver mode. After a few minutes, the screen is going to change into something special. Let me show you what that looks like. And here's what the screen saver mode looks like. As you can see, the screen has turned off. We are still recording and we can use this like a regular mirror. However, we have the date and time. We have the recording indicator. So we have assurance that the dash cam is recording. We still have our compass and we have our miles per hour indicator. And I think this is convenient for an in-between, in between having a digital mirror and having a standard mirror. And this dash cam also supports adjusting the rear view. We can flip that image horizontally or we can flip the image vertically, which is convenient if you're placing the camera in the rear upside down or in some other orientation, we can correct for that here. But now that I show you the main features of this dash cam and the settings, let's take it out for a test drive so we can see how well the video looks both at day and at night. And really the point of this video was to show you how manufacturers sometimes continuously upgrade products not only in between generations but in between an actual product run. So I have seen other dash cams that have released new firmware after I review them and they gotten better or they have added new hardware after I review them and they have gotten better. So it's pretty neat to see that Wolfbox is continually upgrading their products. And even though I call this dash cam the Wolfbox GA50 B2, really it was actually B1. Right now if you order a GA50 you're gonna get B2 which is the newest version of Wolfbox GA50 which makes me wonder if any of you were some of the first to order a GA50 and got like me at one of the very first GA50 did you guys get this highly collectible and unbuyable now GA50 with a special feature if you did let me know in the comments down below it'd be kind of cool to see how many people actually got this very hard to find GA50 now and normally this is where I tell you that I put a link to this dash cam in the description below but I can't because you cannot buy this dash cam you can only buy the newer version of it so instead I'll put a link to that version in the description down below including a link to the original GA50 review video if you want to check that out and compare it against the GA50 that I showed you on this video and stay tuned as I have a lot more dash cam reviews coming up thank you guys for watching and as always I'll see you on the next one